Morning everybody, Claire here from Rainbow Acrylics. Big, big morning, big, big day today. I'm about to do my biggest ever, ever, ever commission. Biggest ever painting ever. Um, it's 120 by 91 centimetres. So I've got it laid out here on my dining room table and it takes up the majority of my table. So I'm so excited to get started. Um, I'm just gonna turn the camera around to show you, to try and, try and help you to sort of understand the size of this painting because it's huge. Let me try and turn my camera around. So this is it. Um, my dining room table here is 1.8 meters. So you can just see how it's just, it's just absolutely huge. Um, this is the base color for the, the commission. Um, it's so I'm doing a Dutch pour. So my jug is virtually full of paint. And then if I show you the colors I'm using around here, these are my colors. Um, I'm using um, um, Pebio Studio Acrylics Copper, DecoArt Metallic Amethyst, um, Amsterdam Acrylic um, Violet Light, Silver Pebio Studio Acrylics, Amsterdam Sky Blue, Pebio Blue Green Iridescent, Amsterdam White. So the base um, is this blue, Amsterdam um, Acrylic Blue. Um, what I have done um, you can see that the canvas over there is, is already blue. I've actually coated it with a coat of um, dark ultramarine um, blue because this paint here is actually transparent. If I show you, let me focus it. Where is it? If I show you that bit there, can you see there's three black crosses and then there is a white, empty white box and that means that the paint is transparent. Oh, I'm covering myself in paint. Um, so if I just pour this colour straight on, um, actually the white background of the canvas will show through so it will look quite light. I'm going for a really dark looking um, blue, navy blue for this. Um, all of these paints I have mixed in my normal Dutch pour um, ratio, which is two to one to one and a half. So two parts Floetrol. This is the Floetrol I've used. I'm in the UK, so this is the what, what would I get in the UK? Two parts Floetrol, one part paint to one and a half parts water. So that I've done for every single bottle here, except the metallics. So the copper, the silver, and the bluish green, I've done a ratio of two to one to two. So two parts Floetrol, one part paint, to two parts water. Because the metallics are thicker, they need more water. So I've done that um, already. So um, I'm so excited, let's get, let's get started. Just wanted to show you one thing quickly before I get started. You might have seen my uh, previous video, video when I did this triptych. So this was the practice piece for this big commission. So I was testing out the colours. Um, so if I just show you um, the results of, the, of, the, of that practice. So the colours are just gorgeous. Um, the one thing I'm changing is the depth of this blue base. This is so dark, it looks black. Um, and that was because I covered this, I painted this canvas black before pouring the transparent ultramarine blue from Amsterdam on top. So the difference is there's no black undercoat on this one, it's the dark ultramarine instead of the black. So I'm still aiming, this is going to be dark blue when it's dry, but not as dark as this. But this is just to show you the colours um, and the, the design. I absolutely love this, this arrangement, this, this um, colour combination, it's just gorgeous. Um, so let's put that away. So I have mixed up the biggest jug of paint I have ever mixed before. So this is almost two litres, um, 1,700 millilitres of paint here. Um, so, well, paint, Floetrol and water in the, the two to one to one and a half ratio.
So I think I'm, I'm happy with my, my, my blue on there. Um, you have to get the level of base colour just right. If it's too thin, the paints won't move. If it's too thick, they're just going to splatter everywhere. Um, you'll notice when I was spreading it around, it's leaving lots of streaks and lots of marks. That doesn't really matter because actually as it, it, as it settles, it will sort of self-level quite a bit. Um, and certainly when it's dry, it won't show. Um, I've used my blowtorch just to pop a lot of these air bubbles. Um, I mixed the bl this blue paint up this morning, but I mixed it up probably a couple of hours ago just to give it time to settle so that um, any air bubbles can come to the surface. So it shouldn't be too bubbly. So this painting is going in a um, stairwell um, and so it's going to be hung um, put in a portrait position. So what I'd like to do, um, and if this makes sense, the stairs are, are coming up here. So I'd like the flow of the painting to go with the stairs. So I'm going to do um, an, an S shape, Dutch pour, starting here and coming round like this. So when it's hung on the wall, the painting goes up in the same direction as the stairs, because I think composition-wise that would look best. So I'm just going to get my paints in colour order. So the order I'm going to put the colours on, um, I don't know if you can see this, white, the metallic purple, sky blue, copper, the violet, Amsterdam violet, the iridescent blue green and then silver. Um, I have mixed up the metallics here, so we've got, or iridescent, 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 oh and iridescent actually. Um, and I've, I've tried to split up the purples and the bluey turquoises. Um, yeah, so that's how, that's how I'm going to go. Um, I'll put the paints on, I'm going to do an S shape like this. I want the colours to cover a lot of this canvas. Um, so there will be some plain blue sections in the corners, but I wanted to cover most. So I'm going to do an S, but then like my previous large Dutch pour, I'm going to do another S to either side, just to really be able to build up the colour. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to start with white to give maximum contrast between the blue and the, um, and the colour colours I'm putting on. Right, what I'm going to do now is flood the canvas. So I'm simply going to just pour a little bit of this blue around the edge of the coloured design here and then I'm going to blow the blue over the colours to flood it and what that will do is just help it, when I, when I blow it out, it will just help it, the colours move. So with, just with the very low setting on my hairdryer, um, I'm just going to gently blow that blue across the colour.
So I finished blowing around. Um, I've spent quite a long time adding extra paint, blowing it around, taking bits off, adding bits. Um, and you really can't see from this video at all the, the end result. There's a lot of reflections. Um, and it's all a lot of it, especially the edge design, is really quite subtle um, at the moment. So what, what I'm hoping is going to happen is that the um, dark blue will dry darker. And then actually all the design will be, will be much more obvious, will show up a lot more. Um, so let me take you in for a close-up. Um, these colours are just gorgeous. Oh, let me just put this light on. That might help. The colours, the, the purple, blue, white and copper and turquoise, I, they are absolutely gorgeous. So I've got through the centre of this painting, I've, I've ended up with this really beautiful sort of fanned out pattern uh, where I've blown it the paint with the hairdryer in, in the different directions. Um, I love the way they just they just all blend. So they're all separate colours and you can see them all in their own right. But then there's bits where they just all merge together and just blend beautifully. Um, these sorts of bits I think will look great once it's dry because it, it will be the, the blue will be so much darker, you'll have so much more contrast and they'll just look like these lovely wispy bits in the dark blue. Um, so the, the central pattern will be, I think, stand out more and then you'll have these, it will fade to these lovely, lovely wispy bits. Um, it's very difficult to show you um, the whole painting in one. I think once it's dry and I can stand it up on a wall, it will be much easier. Um, so this is the top right corner. Again, just the colours are lovely, really, really beautiful. Um, there's an awful lot of paint on here, so this is going to take... I, my last one took about five days to dry. I think this is going to be similar. Um, and what you can't see as well from this video, that all these little wispy bits, um, you can see a shimmer in them because you've got the um, iridescent paints um, mixed in. There's a lot of detail. If you really get looking, there's lots of different, just weird and wonderful effects. Um, within the paints, different swirls, different cells. Um, yeah, loving this copper. Absolutely love it. It's beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, I'll show you from the side. I wanted to show you the the position it will be. It will end up in. Um, but this is this is the side view. So at the moment, quite subtle. But let's see what happens when it dries. I think it will look quite different. It's finally dry. It has taken a week to dry this painting. Um, so I haven't had my dining room table for a whole week. So I'm really pleased it's dry. Um, it is massive. I am so pleased with it. Um, I, I think I've, I've done as I've been asked to do. I've got a really nice deep blue around the edge. Um, I've got paint that's covering a lot of the canvas, but not quite all. The best bit, I think is this amazing shimmer. There is, I used a, um, iridescent paints throughout the whole painting, and I, do, I don't know if you, you can see it, I think you probably can actually. Uh, the iridescence, the shimmer shininess of this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I am really happy with this color combination. I think it's just gorgeous. The blue, um, turquoise, bronze, white, purple the purple is very subtle it's there but it's very subtle and i think that's because it's it's quite a sort of bland color compared to the other contrasting colors and i think it's got just a bit a bit lost but it is there and it's just gorgeous um i love it that pale blue in there um really happy with that to be honest it's the copper i love the copper I've rarely used copper um, until recently, a few paintings recently, and with the right combination of other colours, um, it is gorgeous. So I now need to wait for this to completely cure. Um, that's going to take about three or four weeks and then I can varnish it. Um, when it's varnished, that shimmeriness will just pop. It would just, get, it would just look amazing. Um, it would just really bring the whole painting to life. Um, so I've got to stand right back. It is huge. So I said this was a commission and it's to go in, in a stairwell. So there will be lots of light. So I'm just hoping the light will just shine really beautifully on all this iridescent colour. Um, great. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. Um, leave me any comments or questions. Thank you.